How can you become the fastest runner you can possibly be? And what's the best training method for you? I got this question in the comments below and it helps me to answer exactly that. Is the 80-20 method a myth? Now, for me, running is a journey of continuous improvement and it closely mirrors life, which is why I love it so much. I think that who you are as a runner tells me about your character, tells me about your work ethic, your discipline, your resilience, reliability, lots of other good things. And you could take those into the rest of your life. If you're new to running, and when I say that, you might be completely new to running and this is your first week. You might be, have not run for the last one to two years. So essentially you're, you're getting back into it, you're restarting, you're new to running. You may have been running for 10 years, but never thought to in, insert structure into your week. And so I class all of those categories as relatively new runners that you can work with and can massively improve massively improve and go way past what you think is possible. When you begin running or when you restart running, pretty much whatever you do will move you forward. You will improve pretty much whatever you do. And I'm talking, if you were to go out there and run every single day for 20 minutes, as slow as you possibly can, but you were running for the first time or the first time since high school, and you ran every day as slow as you possibly could for 20 minutes, you will build an endurance pace, and when you try to do a, a 5K, and then you do that sort of 12 weeks later, you're going to improve because your aerobic capacity will improve and you will be getting fitter. Is it the optimal way? No, it's not. But the important part of it is that you're hardwiring the habit so that you have that habit installed in your life. You're the person who wakes up, gets their kit on, and goes out for a run, and that is the most important thing in a pursuit of endurance, and definitely in running and cycling. You're getting up and you're making it happen whether you feel one out of 10 or 10 out of 10, it's happening. That is as important as all the improvement in the world. But let me get to that improvement. So what is the 80-20 method? So 80% of your running would be slow and easy, 20% of it would be faster and you would exert yourself more like intervals, tempos, threshold runs, etc. The split is nice, it works. Most coaches will say that the harder work is between 20 and 33%. It all depends on the split. Would you move forward if you came from not running at all to 80-20 method? Absolutely, again, you would improve and you would improve more than the person that is just going out there every single day and running as slow as they possibly can. So if you turn that into five days a week, I'm going out and I'm running 20 minutes as slow as I possibly can, but for two of those days, I'm going out there and I'm doing the 20 minutes again, but I'm trying to push myself so I cannot, for example, talk. Running is as simple or as complicated as we make it, and often we try to overcomplicate it. We like to overcomplicate things. If you look at zone training, which is a popular topic now and makes complete sense, and not so dissimilar from 80-20, if we work it, the zones in the right way. If we keep 80% of our effort in zone one, zone two, and then 20% of our effort in zone three, four, five, and we work over the zones, but in that kind of ratio. Would you move forward? Again, it's probably very, very similar to method one, 80-20. Right now, if, what are your zones? And if you look at the data, we've got data on our wrist all the time. It's tracking our heart rate, it's tracking our sleep tells us a lot, maybe too much. What are zones? If you went out there and ran with your buddy and he or she asked you, out of five, how difficult is this running for you right now? If you would say one out of five, that would probably be zone one, meaning I could, keep, I could, I could hold this all day. If it was a two out of 10, actually I feel as if we're doing something now, it's probably zone two. If this is a five out of five, probably can't hold it so much longer, then you're probably in zone five, six, or seven. And you probably, if you're relatively new to running, you're not used to training that fast. What's important, whatever training method you're following, is that you get your running body ready before you start to add in little bits. If you were completely new to running, 
and you just jump straight into a plan. And it was midweek intervals, weekend long run, and then two or three recovery runs, easy runs. You're going to be doing some fast work. You're going to be doing some long work. So what you're increasing there is the faster work, the long run, and the total volume. And maybe the surface that you're, because you're not, you've not run before, so whatever surface you run on is going to be new. It's the four easiest ways to increase too quickly to get injured. So you're putting yourself in, and those compounds, so you're putting yourself in exponential risk of getting injured. But in actual fact, the easiest way or the quickest way for you to improve is just to implement the habit and get used to getting up on a daily basis and running every day. And maybe in the beginning, that needs to be every other day, and the days in between, you're just going out there and walking. And as I said before, if that's just four runs per week, 20 minutes, as slow as you possibly can, brilliant. Get to four, six, eight weeks, then implement speed. And then, okay, I can run for more than 20 minutes, so I need to do a long run. What does that look like? Let me Google on the internet. A long run is 90 minutes to two hours. So you're gonna jump from 20 minutes to one and a half hours, or you're gonna think about it and think, okay, a long run for me is actually 25 minutes, 25% more than I'm used to running. So I'm gonna do a long run at 25 minutes. And, and the progressions from that, 25 minutes, maybe 28 minutes, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, and onwards from there. The key to distance running is consistency and it's gradually increasing the key things that move the needle. So your interval training, your speed work and speed endurance, key factor of performance. Your long run, your endurance and your stamina, key factor of how well you're gonna do in a 5K race or a 10K race or a marathon race, really important. Total volume, incredibly important and will impact your race as well. But we can only increase each of those things separately in order to reduce injury risk as well. Because the progress, as I said at the beginning, the progress is going to be forward. It's gonna be up no matter what you do if you're new to running. Because you're inserting a habit and you're doing something for the first time, so naturally your body is brilliant and it's gonna become more efficient at moving over the ground. Your heart and lungs are going to be, oh, okay, now we're pushing the body over the ground, we need to improve, the heart rate will come down for exactly the same pace if you were just to be that person who's running every single day as slow as you possibly can for 20 minutes per day. What would happen after maybe two, three, four weeks is you'd be able to move over the ground so you'd go longer in that 20 minutes. For me, the benefits of 80-20 training would be that you're keeping your athlete or you're keeping yourself 80% of the time you're going easy and it's a great recipe for success. You're then keeping just 20% of the time of you pushing. You're pushing so it's slightly some discomfort there and then you're pushing a little bit harder than that. And that split means that most of the time you're recovering and you're doing easy runs but you're building volume in a safe way and also it's sustainable over long periods of time. Is it optimal? There'd be other things that you need to consider within that. What kind of training sessions you're doing? What kind of long runs you're doing? What else are you doing in a week? What does your week look like? What does your life look like? What can we tap into from your sporting background? Lots of other factors that come into it. But as a training method, does it work? Of course. And most of the coaches, as I said earlier, work with between 20% hard and 33% hard. Most of the top coaches in the world. So yes, it works, but what are those things that you're doing within that 20 to 33%?